Welcome to the War Academy channel. Today we have a very interesting video, in which with the best possible example, we are going to see the total decline of the German army during World War II. The measure on which we are going to focus to analyze this matter is going to be the so-called Luthen project, which is added to other measures that we have already seen, such as the creation of the Volkstrom or the Werewolf. Before entering fully into the Luthen project, which consisted of a massive mobilization of all German units at the beginning of 1945, let us briefly compare the states through which the German army passed during the war, to better understand the situation reached in recent months. During the first campaigns of the conflict, whether in Poland, Denmark, Norway, France or in the invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941, the German divisions always had all their troops, and their corresponding number of regiments and battalions. This troop was of the highest quality, and had received a long training of many months and even years. Until Operation Barbarossa, the casualties that the German units were suffering, were replenished normally, and the training courses of the troops were not altered. Everything would change after the end of the year 1941, after the failure of taking the last objectives of the operation, and the different Soviet offensives. During this period, which goes approximately from November of the year 41 to March of 1942, the German army saw its troops diminished, to levels that they could not even imagine. To give us an idea, of the total of 162 infantry divisions they had in Soviet territory, only eight were in an optimal situation. The rest were, to a greater or lesser extent, in a very bad state, and they needed to send many reinforcement soldiers, in order to continue operating. This situation led to the training time that soldiers received in Germany having to be shortened, and to reducing the size of some divisions that were in areas of little activity, to reinforce others that had to participate in the following offensives. From this date of 1942, the situation of the German army became more precarious, and did nothing but worsen with each new defeat, such as Stalingrad, the Soviet counter-offensives in Kursk, and the different offensives at the end of 1943 and 1944. In short, we will say that Germany had a growing need for soldiers, and due to the criticality of the situation, the training that could be given to them before sending them to the front, was getting smaller and shorter. It is for this reason, that when figures are spoken of at the end of the conflict, and it is said that the German army had so many divisions or so many millions of soldiers, it must be borne in mind that there were neither soldiers nor divisions comparable to those of the first years of the conflict. Having seen this, let us now see what the Luthen project consisted of. It all started in early 1945, when the Soviets launched the Vistula Oder Offensive, and the German defenses in the area collapsed. It was then that many desperate measures were taken, such as the creation of all sorts of new divisions, with soldiers who until then had been considered unfit for combat. The appointment of Himmler as Commander-in-Chief of Army Group Vistella, or the Luthen Project that we are going to see today. This plan consisted in the mobilization of all the soldiers who were in their training phase, so that they could quickly replace the units that were fighting at the front. As soon as they received the Luthen code word, all of these soldiers would be taken out of their training quarters and sent to the front lines. Once they reached the combat zones, and due to their inexperience, they would receive a few days of much more intense training than the one given to them in the barracks, and immediately afterwards, they would be thrown into combat. Although this project could have made some sense when the front was stable, and the integration of these soldiers into the regular army could be done in an orderly manner, it had to be improvised at a time when the situation was completely critical. This led to widespread disorder, and real disasters on the front, which ended with thousands of German casualties, because those men were not ready to go into combat, much less to face the Red Army. To understand the way in which the military training system was organized in Germany, we have to know that the country was divided into a series of military districts, each of them responsible for the military training and organization of the men of the province. In each of them, there were a certain number of training and replacement units of various weapons, commanded by divisional staffs. 
The men who had completed their training and were ready to go into combat, were in the replacement units, and were sent to the front based on the demand for troops that was in each of them. On the other hand, the training units were made up of newly arrived recruits, who had to be prepared for combat, through an eight-week basic training course. This cycle, as we have mentioned before, only shortened as the conflict progressed, and the need for new soldiers was greater. After receiving the code word Luthen, these recruits, who had only one to seven weeks of training, had to go to their new assignments on the front lines. Making a brief comparison, the boys of the famous 12th SS Panzer Division had almost a year of training. To these half-trained recruits, who were mostly men or too young or too old, we must add a large number of soldiers who had been rushed out of hospitals without being fully recovered. With regard to their weapons, it should be noted that because there were many recruits, who were mobilized at full speed in this so-called Project Luthen, there were many units that were very short of weapons, and the little they received was not the right one. In addition to this lack of rifles, machine guns and ammunition, they also lacked means of motorized transportation, as well as a number of appropriate horses to transport the little heavy material they had. They also did not have field kitchens, because to date their food had been prepared in their corresponding barracks. Another aspect to assess, and so that we can see to what extent they were bad, was that these units could not even be equipped with the clothing and uniforms of the time, because by 1945, they had also begun to be scarce. In short, the shortage of equipment in general, which to date had been something that had been dealt with on an occasional basis, now became a very present reality that had to be accepted. All these points lead us to the fact that this project was a total failure, which only served to alarmingly increase the number of casualties, which the German army was already suffering. Although for more than a year, the instructors of these barracks and academies had begun to be sent to combat, in this project, they also ended up resorting to the few that remained. This meant that from this point on, training in these barracks was already directly unfeasible, although on the other hand, the end was already imminent, and there was no time to train new units either. In short, this Luthen project ended up dismantling the German military training system, and as of February and March 1945, the new soldiers who were sent to combat could no longer count on even a minimum regularized training. This training was carried out on the same front, and consisted of only a minimum teaching on how the weapon they were going to use in the imminent combat worked. In any case, these improvisations and emergency measures were taken at a time when the situation was completely critical, and at this point, any measure taken to shore up the front would have given a similar result. And what do you think? Do you think this Luthen project that was applied in the final phase of the war is appropriate? Do you think that another more effective measure could have been applied? I await your answers in the comment box. If you want to delve into the different measures that were adopted by both the German and Soviet armies throughout the war, I recommend the Siege Book, which has also served me well for this program, which I leave you in the description along with a video on tactics to free encircled troops. That's all, subscribe and support this channel if you like this program, and see you in the next video, see you soon.